Good morning, Dan, and in for Amy this morning, Chicago Tribune, page two columnist, the legendary John Cass. John, a pleasure to have you in with us again. And uh, the you issue. You do not get the Mutza. What's that? I do you're, not. You're exempt. I do because you I like the 15 Republicans in Madigan are exempt. Yes. Well, we'll be talking about that at the bottom of the hour with State Representative Mark Batnick. But i uh, got to talk a little bit about CNN hmm. for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, Project Veritas. This is James O'Keefe, another underki- uh, undercover video he released yesterday. This time, one of his uh, operatives talking to New Day uh, associate producer Jimmy Carr. New Day is the Chris Cuomo show, the morning show. And uh, here's what uh, New Day associate producer Jimmy Carr had to say about uh, Trump and about uh, you, the American voter, at least the American voter who voted for Trump. We all recognize he is a clown, that he is hilariously un- unqualified for this, that he's really bad at this, and that he does not have America's best interests. We recognize he's just fucking crazy. Would it be fair to question the intellect of the American voter? Oh, no, they're stupid as shit. <laughs> Right. Trump is effing crazy, does not have the best interests of America at heart. And you, the American voter, again, who voted for Trump, uh, are stupid as uh, or yeah, you're, you're stupid as logical. Yeah. And so that's that. And Kellyanne Conway, who I think has been on. Uh, been on Chris Cuomo's show, been on New Day many, many times. Uh, she was uh, characterized by Mr. Carr, thusly. So Kellyanne Conway. What's she look like? The, is she the one with the... She looks like she got hit with a shovel. She uh, looks like she got hit with a shovel. Kellyanne Conway looks like she got hit in the head or hit in the face with a shovel. I mean, commenting on a woman's physical appearance. Uh, it's okay if you're on the left. I mean, w- I will there be outrage, and I'm not suggesting that uh, there, there's a standard for the president of the United States, and there perhaps are different standards for associate producers, uh, you know, back office types at, at uh, cable news network. But, I mean, just in terms of the civility of our discourse with somebody that's producing CNN's morning show, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to note, isn't it? Uh, this in the context of... Uh, some of the other CNN programming, and I don't just want to harp on CNN, but it's just front and center because I've got problems with all the cable news networks, including Fox, by the way. But I, I go back to Michael Wolf, who, you know, no man of the right, by the way, Hollywood reporter, Vanity Fair, media critic. He was on Brian Stelter's program. Brian Stelter is their media guy, the media critic, if you will, has a show on Sundays. And uh, Michael Wolf said this about what media has become in D.C., and frankly, about Brian Stelter himself to Brian Stelter. The media correspondent for CNN turns to the camera every Sunday morning and delivers a pious sermon about Trump's perfidiousness. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Tell me about that particular issue. Do you feel that my style is wrong or my substance is wrong, trying to fact check the president? I I think it's, uh, and I mean this with um, truly no disrespect, but I think you can uh, border on being sort of quite a ridiculous figure. Um, (laughs) It's not a good look to repeatedly and self-righteously defend your own self-interest. The media should not be the story. Every week, in this religious sense, you make it the story. We are not the story. For more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined by former CNN Washington Bureau Chief Frank Sesno. The last time we talked to Mr. Sesno, I think it was uh, in relation to his book, Ask More, which I actually read and is really good. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, books on the media from somebody who knows the game, uh, I certainly recommend Ask More and appreciate, uh, Frank, you joining us again. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. Um, so what about what uh, what Michael Wolff uh, said uh, about uh, Stelter and, and the D.C. press corps in general, really, uh, as well as what you heard uh, that associate producer for uh, New Day uh, say? If we zoom out and go to Mars and pretend we're looking down and we're looking at the media, I think we would conclude that um, they've lost their way in many ways. Uh, what media should be doing, what journalism should be doing, is looking at issues and stories and people and things and stop talking about talking about talking about things <laughs> and constantly navel-gazing. I mean, this was part of the problem and part of the criticism.
from the election campaign. Mm -hmm. We talked about people rather than talking to and with people. And I think it becomes the case now. And what happens then is this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. For people who voted for Donald Trump, all they hear is criticism from the media about Donald Trump, and they start tuning the media out. Rather than, rather than, you know, and when I, you know, you talk about when I was your chief, I was also a White House correspondent. I was a, I was an anchor and all this other kind of stuff. And we had this whole thing when I joined CNN. We don't have stars. The news is the star. And we often said, just as, as, as John was saying a moment ago, we're not the story. Now, the media are more the story now because the president is making them, but they're kind of like playing into this narrative a little bit and making themselves more the story. I would love to see everybody go way back. Media shows should look at what is good journalism, what is bad journalism, and quit all this you know, constant gapping. Ignore some of the president's tweets when he goes after fake news instead of being drawn into them all the time. And, and get a life here and, and cover things that matter. One of the things I, uh, I've noticed being working in Chicago and always rejecting the idea of editors to go to uh, Washington is that it seems that, uh, in general, the cable news and, and the Beltway media uh, in general, are less journalists than guardians of the establishment. And I don't mean it just in a partisan sense for now with respect to Trump, but in general, regardless of who's in office, there is sort of an us versus them attitude, them being the people and us being the guardians of, uh, of, the, uh, of the royals. You get that uh, sense? You've been in it. You have been. You were at the bit, White House. A bit, yeah. a bit. I look at it a little bit differently. Uh, I think it's less as guarding the, the palace as it is just um, living inside the bubble and, and playing into the echo and losing sight of some of the other things that matter. I have this idea that I'm pursuing. Maybe you can help me with this. I'm director of the School of Media and Public Affairs at George Washington University. Right. Some of our students are journalism students. They want to be journalists. Good luck. Yeah. Um, and... and uh, they come partly because of all these great internships that they can. They can go to the Washington Post, they can go to NPR, they can go to CNN, they can go to the Wall Street Journal, all these things. But well, I've got this new thing that I'm pursuing, and I'm gonna, we're going to try to get some other internships going for them. I want them to go to Wheeling, West Virginia. I want to go to, to Biloxi. I want them to go to Billings, Montana. We, our, the best journalists are journalists who can go to places they've never been before, talk to people they've nev never met before, and tell stories they've never imagined before, rather than being in the bubble and just echoing what they hear over and over again. Yeah, I'll tell you, so if, if this kind of plays out here locally with the Chicago and Springfield uh, press corps, and so you know, when you have government in crisis, as I'm sure you know Illinois is, oh, yeah. has been for some you're doing, time. You're doing well. You've got great things going. Yes, exactly. We're the, the greatest exodus since the Israelites fled Egypt is going on here. But um, when you're in the bubble, what you become, it's maybe even it's not overt that you're uh, the Praetorian Guard for the palace, but you only see the crisis in government. You become the big government press corps. There's crisis in government, no question. There's also crisis among 90 percent of people who live outside of government. And we just talk about government programs in, price, in crisis or a state budget that is isn't balanced. And we don't talk, uh, we don't see coverage, I should say, of, you know, the lives that are being led by 90 percent of people, many of whom are also in crisis. But because they're not directly connected to a government program, uh, their stories aren't told. That is exactly right. And what CNN and what Fox and what Rush Limbaugh and everybody in media should be doing is getting to those people you're talking about and telling their stories. How are they going to put their kids to college? What happens when the factory closes? What happens when they ha closes? What happens when they have a college degree and they can't get a job? What happens to a kid? How, do, how does a young couple paying $800, $1,200 a month in child care buy a house? What happens to the middle class? What is the future of work? And on and on and on it goes. Now, I would say this, though, and it doesn't mean that the journalism should give up, give up one of its core functions. One of the core functions of journalism is to hold powerful people to account. And so there should be constant scrutiny on people in power, whether it's the governor of Illinois or the president of the United States yeah. or the mayor of Chicago or New York or any little town. We, we, we depend on that. You know, here we just had the Fourth of July, and I'm reading this great book on, on Thomas Jefferson. He didn't have a great, oper a great relationship with the media. No, he yet, did not. And yet he defended it. So we can't lose sight of that. 
Well, I just want to stick on CNN. I I probably kind of already answered this, but I feel like I need to address the specific instance because of the accusations of uh, blackmail. CNN is blackmailing this uh, Reddit guy who posted the video that, uh, you know, Trump fake wrestling a CNN head and uh, and all of the hand wringing over this. But but what's your reaction to how CNN handled that in terms of not deciding not to publish his name so long as he took the video down and agreed not to do it? Is that blackmail? Is that just being is that judicial judicious restraint on the part of CNN? What how how, how did they handle it? it uh, well, they sort of got themselves in trouble by trying to do the right thing. So one of the things that I've called for <clears throat> is more and more transparency. So if you're going to talk to four anonymous sources. Be sure you tell the, your, your readers or your listeners that there are four sources. Tell them where they come from as exactly. best you can. Okay, so we know. In this situation, what CNN says they were trying to do was to talk to somebody who didn't want his name out there. That was his condition. Try to be as transparent as possible and said well, this could change if this person changes. It's a convoluted and confusing thing they did that can certainly play into this notion that there's sort of blackmail. You don't do this, buddy. We're going to release your name. I don't think that's what they were trying to do. I think they were trying to be uh, transparent with the audience. But, you know, John, when you when you negotiate with sources, you know, you kind of come up with some, with, with this, these rules of the road. Right. Um, they certainly open themselves up to some serious criticism. Well, here. One thing I've always found, and I learned, I wrote about this last week, and I learned it uh, over the taping of, Harold Washington, our, for, our former late former mayor, years ago when I was a kid in the business, yeah. our, our editor decided to put the uh, not to identify the source by name, but to put the motiva- political motivation of the source out there. In other words, yep. this source came from the anti-Washington camp. It was a Very valuable important. lesson. I don't think CNN has followed it, but I don't think Fox News follows it either, or any of the others. And I wonder why that isn't done enough. Well, I, you know, I can't answer that. I have argued for years and years that CNN, I, I'm glad they have a Brian Stelter. That's fine. I've been on the show. I've substituted for him. I, I like it when you did it. <laughs> you have better hair. Um, you, have, you have better hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's what qualifies you in television. <laughs> um, uh, but I have called for years for CNN to have the equivalent of an ombudsman or a public editor to explain their decisions and explain these things to the public. News organizations should have the same transparency and, and be as accountable and answerable to the public as they demand of every other institution. And it's not good enough to put out a PR statement from, you know, from, from the PR crowd uh, and, and move on. Uh, you know, so I, I think that the explanations often um, are inadequate. And generally speaking, the public would have more respect for what's going on inside news organizations if they were taken into the the, the debates and, and what's going on, wouldn't mm-hmm. always be very nice if people know what people are saying, like the Veritas tape seems to indicate. But you know, it's the game you're playing in. One thing so. I'd like to offer you is uh, in your new job uh, with the young people. Um, I found young reporters relying too much on email. They email someone and expect a response. Can you tell those young reporters get in somebody's face, call them up? Find out where they live, use their library card, whatever. Jump out of a bush. Track them down it's, and go up a, to the guy. Don't wait totally, for Totally. Totally. It's a generational thing, right? right. Um, reporters, like everybody else, they text, they email, and it's, I'm, I'm, always, I'm with you. I'm saying, get on the phone, right. tie up your shoes, go out, spend three hours on someone's doorstep, talk to them, hear their voice. Because that's how you build relationships, and that's how you develop sources. Hat and you know, coat says, says no. Hat and coat. That's all I'm saying. Hat and coat, yeah. Get your hat and coat and get out there. You know, I'll tell you, the guy who tells the best stories on this, who is the most compelling, is Bob Woodward. Because that's how Bob Woodward became Bob Woodward. He, he just showed up, and it was sort of gumshoe reporting. It was like spotlight. He was there, he was there, he was there. And that's how you break stories. The public, though, by the way, we need to, we need to inform people about this. Because there's a lot of really hard work that goes into this very easy to pile on and there's lots to pile on in the way media work but there are also some you know terrific people who work very hard and in some cases risk their lives for this business so i just want to raise my hand for that too all right he is frank Cessno, former washington bureau chief for cnn the author of the book ask more and now uh heading up the j school over at george washington uh, 
So if you've got a young person interested in being a journalist, you may want to consider George Washington J School. Frank Sesno, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Have a great day. And he joined us on the turnkey.pro answer line. <laughs>